kind of reminded me of this. Children are church members. Okay? Your children, part of this church, are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are church members. So all the obligations that you and I owe to one another as church members extend to them as well. You think about those obligations. You think about how you can extend those obligations to the children of this church. And I hope and pray that that will bear godly fruit. Two in particular, children are welcome in worship. This is one of the wonderful things about this congregation that I've appreciated, is that we don't typically get too stressed out about kids in the church. You ever been in one of those churches where everything's so silent that if a child bats an eyelash, everybody stares and looks, right? That, there are churches that struggle with that sort of problem. I'm glad that that's not the case here. I'm glad that we have kids in the service. No, I mean, parents have to have wisdom in deciding how that works. No rules or regulations to govern that. But by and large, let's be a church that's glad to have children. They were disruptive in Jesus' day, too, and he said, suffer the little children to come. Another thing is, we need to remember that kids are under the rule and authority of session pastoral care of the session. One thing that I've observed before is that kids sometimes don't think that the pastor's their pastor. He's their parents' pastor. Kids, I'm your pastor. All the kids in the pew are, are over here, so I'm looking at you guys. You guys look at me. I'm your pastor. Okay? If you have questions about the Bible, you've got prayer requests, you've got struggles, you've got problems, okay? It's my job. Your pastor. These are your elders. Okay? Take that seriously. And parents, don't be afraid. You can't answer questions or something. Or you need your kids to hear some counsel. Whatever it may be. Don't remember that. Your kids are church members. It's very important. That's one thing. The other thing is family worship. I think it would be really remiss not to just mention the obligation that we have to worship with our children. This is one of those things that will look different in every home. But the difference between one home and the other shouldn't be that one Christian family does family worship and another doesn't, right? The difference might be in how long it is or how it's conducted. No, again, no set pattern. But in general, frequently, regularly, you should do worshiping together as a family in your home. Everyone basically in agreement, okay? Don't want to put any huge burden on you. You have to do it a certain way. Family worship is important. Very important. Keep it brief. You don't have to worship for 45 minutes every weeknight, right? Three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever your kids can handle. In our house right now, it's maybe 90 seconds, honestly, because that's just about how long we have before everything explodes. So just saying, right? But start. Do it. Better to do it 90 seconds every day than three hours once every two years. Do you agree? Keep it simple. Read the Bible. It doesn't take a genius to get the Bible out, flip to an appropriate passage, and read a paragraph. Right? It doesn't take a lot of work. Pray with your children. There's nothing better than hearing a child who knows how to pray because they've learned how to pray from their parents. That's a, an incredible fruit of the Spirit in a child's life. Catechize your children. Some of the children in this church are going through the children's catechism or the shorter catechism. I'd encourage you to, to do that. Maybe as a church, there are ways that we can do that, but I mean, we only have limited time here. But parents, you can take your kids through catechisms. It's a wonderful tool to help them understand the Bible. And discuss. Don't be afraid to ask kids what they think. Do they have questions? Have they ever heard of this before? And get them talking about the Bible. It's a wonderful thing when families are skilled and experienced in talking about the scriptures together. I think those are some of the things that we can do. And just as one maybe final tip, remember that there's some really good resources out there for family worship. I, it's a, I love good Christian kids books. I have to say, I just really enjoy them. So if you're ever looking for an interesting, enjoyable conversation from my perspective anyways, please give me uh, an opportunity to see what books you use for family worship. If you need ideas, I know that there are people in the church here who can help you with that. I have a few ideas maybe. But 
That's important. And you just take advantage of it. Be good. And one final thing, because there's many people here who don't have young children, and you don't have any children. And it's important that we see how this might apply to you. One of the amazing things about the church, I'm struggling to remember which psalm it is, but do you remember the psalm where it says that God puts the lonely in families? That's what God's done to us. He's taken us out of our little isolated worlds and he's put us in a family. So if you're a single guy, single lady, you're a young person, an older person, you don't have a family that you can worship with. I think what you can do if you'd like, I encourage you to do it, although I have to say I've never done this myself, so I'm not going to make it a law for you. Why don't you find a family that you can join for worship? Don't be embarrassed. I don't think anyone here would be embarrassed or upset or think it was impolite for you to say, hey, um, I've really been longing for the privilege of, of worshiping as part of a family. And I wonder if I could join you Thursday night after dinner for 10 or 15 minutes just to get a chance to pray with somebody. I never get that opportunity. Anybody here would be upset if someone asked them that? I hold you all to record. Nobody has nodded. <laughs> Okay. Will we give each other permission to ask that? You have permission. Anybody here has just ascended to offer you the opportunity to worship as part of their family if you so desire. And I've got to say, it's one of the, the uh, greatest blessings when we're at another Christian family's home, when the, the, the general pattern is to read the scriptures after dinner or whatever, we get to have family worship in another family. It's one of the things that I don't have a lot of experience doing, Wasn't uh, hasn't been the practice in our home to hold family devotions with other families, but I've really been convicted by that recently. We should be willing to just get the scriptures out and pray with the video. It doesn't mean we have to be super spiritual or something, really trying to impress, oh, we got you know, a visiting family, we've got to show them that we read 45 chapters a week in our family devotions. That's not the point, right? Read the Lord's Prayer together. Something, anything. Share your favorite song. Pray for five minutes. Pray for ten minutes. Ask them for whatever. You have the wisdom to put this into practice. But remember that that, in Moses' day, may have seemed like a small thing, but think about the rippling effects of family worship from that day to this, that all over the world, there are people who can trace their lineage of Christian uh, witness one generation after another, all the way back to this group of people who experienced God's salvation in Egypt. Think about how many people could be blessed by your family worship 500 years from now. Ever think about that? Think about it. And in God's grace and according to His blessing, may we have the privilege of seeing His praise extend through generations. Father in heaven, thank you that you intended not only to bless the immediate circle of people that you brought out of Egypt all those years ago, and thank you that on the night of our Lord Jesus' death, your intention was not only to bless the immediate group of people who were there to witness the event, but according to your saving power, those events have rung through the ages as acts of saving mercy and power that extend to all generations, forming a community of people, a church that includes all generations, so that praise may spring from the lips of people, not only of one time and place, but throughout all times and all places. Praise that fits the glory and majesty of our eternal God. We ask that you'll bless our efforts to be diligent in this area. We ask you to bless our children. We ask, Lord, that they will walk in godliness and in the fear of the Lord. We pray that many years from now we will see the fruit of our prayers and of our efforts to serve you by caring for them. And Lord, we pray that as a congregation that we will more and more see the value and the blessing of your multi-generational plan of salvation. We ask this in Jesus' name.
going to sing 